All right. Um, so thank you all for for being here for these two days. Um, we're about to witness our final talk of this conference. Um, I'm pleased to introduce Apoorva Joshi. Uh, Apoorva is a senior research scientist on the cloud detection services team at FireEye. Her research mainly deals with integrating ML models into their customer networks and systems. She has a background in hardware engineering and machine learning. And a fun fact about her is that she plays the drums. So let's welcome Apoorva. Can you hear me? Okay, <laughs> thanks. So, uh, thanks, Lauren. Um, so, I'm Apoorva. I'm a senior research scientist on the cloud detection services team at FireEye. Uh, I've been fi at FireEye for like a year and a half and uh, mainly working on different aspects of our email security product. Uh, my research mainly deals with figuring out ways to integrate machine learning into our email product. And today I'm going to talk about uh, a purely lexical feature-based classification, classification approach for uh, detecting malicious URLs that was integrated into our email security product like six months back. Um, it's a fairly simple NLP-based approach, but that's all I knew back then and it works. So. <laughs> um, so here's what the presentation today is going to look like. I'll start off with uh, providing some motivation for why this work is important, followed by other work that's been done in the area and what I did differently. Uh, I'll also talk briefly about the deployment specification for the model and uh, the design requirements and goals that came as a consequence of how we wanted the model to be deployed. Um, I'll also go over the tasks and tools that I used for the project, followed by um, keynote-worthy observations uh, from my research, and I'll ra wrap it up with conclusions and avenues for future work. So malicious URLs are delivered to users through various mediums like uh, emails, text messages, pop-ups, and ads on websites. We all are pretty aware of the things that can go wrong when you click on such URLs like downloading uh, spyware, malware, launching of phishing campaigns, etc. And since I work on our email security product, my main focus was on uh, URLs that are delivered through emails, but the model can be extended to URLs delivered through other mediums as well. Uh, the standard and fastest way to identify malicious URLs has been blacklists, which are, as most of you know, repositories of known malicious URLs, host names, and uh, domains. And an extension to blacklists is uh, heuristic-based lists, which are lists of signatures of common attacks. But the main drawback of methods like these is that they don't generalize too well for newly evolving threats. Then there's been some work which has been uh, more involved, which looks at HTML and JavaScript content of web pages. And I can speak a little bit from my own experience from looking at JavaScript content of web pages. Uh, I think the main challenges we faced there was um, generating labels uh, solely based on <laughs> JavaScript of uh, websites. It's not super reliable. And uh, the parsers, at least the parsers I used, took way too long. Um, and speaking of lexical feature-based models, there has been some work done in that area uh, to the extent that lexical features have been used in conjunction with host information, network traffic, and other schemes. Uh, but there is an inherent latency associated with such approaches where you make lookups to remote servers, and that's not suitable for the kind of load we deal with, which begs the question, what happens if I use a purely lexical-based approach for this? Um, and here's, how we want, here's what we wanted to do. We wanted a model that could sit as a plugin on FOD, which is the FireEye Advanced URL Detection Engine. It is the URL detection and analysis component of our email security product, and it's also responsible for 60% of the detections that come from our email product. Uh, to provide some context on 
uh, the way FOD was initially set up. I'll just quickly skip over to the next slide. Uh, so FOD consists of two components. One is something called the fast path, which is the fast analysis component, which provides verdicts in like a fraction of a millisecond. It consists of blacklists, open fish, um, serval, G GSB, just a bunch of lookups and lists. And whenever there's a URL miss from fast path, is it goes to the slow analysis component, which is called the slow path, which has um, more involved and sophisticated ML and classification models which look at images on websites or HTML text, uh, Yara rules, and all the good stuff, right? And um, there's also some sort of a glue that sits between the fast analysis component and the slow analysis component. Uh, it's like a regex-based uh, regex model that sits as a medium of down selection between the two. And I'm going to go back to talk a little bit more about what the issue was and what problem we're trying to solve. So what we were seeing was we were getting a lot of false negatives coming from FastPath, from all the lookups, and also the regex-based model. And we wanted to correct those FNs. Um, so we wanted a model that could take sort of a second look at the FastPath misses before sending it to SlowPath. So as a consequence of how we wanted the model deployed, we had uh, some strict performance and latency requirements for the model. Uh, one, the model latency had to be closer to that of the fast path component, so it had to be uh, at, in the order of a fraction of a millisecond. And we wanted to correct for false negatives, so we needed the false negative rate to be as low as possible, but not at the cost of a super high false positive rate, because that would mean crawling more URLs for the slow analysis, probably slow verdicts from the slow analysis, and a lot of ha unhappy people. Um, and so yeah, we wanted the model to definitely act as a means of down selection and eventually result in increase in detections from our engine. Uh, a little bit about the data set. I was working with about a five and a half million labeled URL data set consisting of 60% benign and 40% malicious URL samples collected from a variety of sources like OpenFish, Alexa Whitelist, and mostly from internal FireEye products and honeypots. And the design process was pretty straightforward. It involved generating the feature vectors and the actual modeling. And uh, since it's an NLP-based approach, I was sticking strictly to the URL string. Uh, and I chose to go with ngram-based features and combine it with um, some lexical features obtained from the URL string itself. And I used NLTK, which is uh, um, NLP, NLP toolkit in Python, and a murmur hash encoding to encode the ngrams. And I tried various uh, simple and ensemble-based machine learning algorithms for the modeling, and I found out that random forest was the best for the purpose. Um, as I mentioned in the previous slide, there are two parts to the modeling. The first one was uh, the ngram-based part. So um, I generated ngrams from the URL string and used um, a murmur hash encoding to sort of generate a reduced dimensionality, one hot representation of the n-grams. And then I had uh, like 23 lexical features coming from the URL string. So I looked at different parts of the URL, like there are some features coming just from the URL domain, some from the path query, et cetera. And I combined the two to generate a 1,023 long feature representation of the URL. Um, a complete list of features is in my archive paper on the website, if anybody is interested. And for the modeling, I looked at simple classifiers like logistic regression and live base, and uh, bagging and boosting classifiers like random forest, gradient boost, and adder boost. And I used metrics like accuracy, AUC, and most importantly, false negative rate to compare between the models. Um, it's not surprising that Random Forest turned out to be the best performing model for my purpose. So 
URLs are basically unstructured, like just the URL string is basically unstructured noisy text data. And bagging algorithms <laughs> tend to perform well for data like this because they average out multiple learners, thus reducing variance and um, tend to be less sensitive to fluctuations in the data. Um, so I tested with about five test sets consisting of about 200,000 URLs and my false negative rate in some cases was as low as like 0.1% and like the worst being like 0.38% and the accuracy was high enough for us to use it as a, a down selection model and the false positive rate was within permissible limits as well. Um, the whole reason why this method works is because lexical features of malicious URLs are significantly different from benign URLs and um, the NLP-based classifier uses a combination of such patterns to distinguish between malicious and benign URLs. And across my whole data set, I found that uh, malicious URLs tend to have top-level domains in a shady list like .rn, .c, uh, .ru, .cn kind of stuff. Then there's like special characters and keywords going on in the URL path. Then some of them have like a weird IP address in the primary domain. Then there's high entropy host names. Like they have a high digit to letter ratio or an uppercase to lowercase ratio is high, stuff like that. Or there's like odd uppercase or single uh, character directories in the URLs. So yeah, it was pretty interesting to see patterns like these. Um, then I wanted to check how much and if there is a gain of using lexical features at all. So I compared uh, like pure n-gram based models with uh, something that has no n-grams and then a combination of the n-grams and lexical features and I found out that a pure n-gram based models without any lexical features had like uh, an FPR that was higher than what we wanted then using just lexical features did not give us a good enough false negative rate. But when I combined the two, I saw that my results were improving and in the end, like a combination of 1,000 n-grams and all the lexical features that I had was um, giving FPR within limits and a low enough false negative rate. Some details about tuning the model. I observed that tuning just the max depth of the uh, trees had a significant impact on model performance and other metric, uh, other parameters not as much. So that's that. <laughs> and after the model went into production, uh, we observed that there was a 22% increase in detections coming from URLs from the engine. And all these are URLs that were selected by the NLP-based model for slow analysis. And we did see a reduction in false negatives after we put that model into the workflow. Um, so what I concluded was purely lexical models do have some um, contribution and are a good alternative to regex or rule-based down selection methods that require constant updates. So the way we used to do it before, or sometimes still do, is um, whenever we see a false negative uh, coming from a certain pattern of URLs, we go in and add a regex, and then, but what happens when a new pattern comes in, right? So something like this generalizes better to a variety of patterns of URLs. And um, some thoughts for future work. Uh, I initially started off with uh, LSTMs and deep learning models for the problem to do away with hand engineering features, but for some reason my model back then was uh, overfitting to the data I had and honestly I didn't have the time or bandwidth to go too much in depth into it back then, but I would like to go back to it and see how that does. Uh, there have also been suggestions to augment the current features with say domain age features of the URL, like newly registered domains or newly um, occurring domains. And uh, I have some thoughts about caching the model verdict so we don't crawl URLs that look similar to uh, URLs that already have 
a verdict, and finally, maybe try getting more data. Uh, I'd like to thank my former boss, Levi Lloyd, for uh, putting me on the project, and my colleagues at FireEye Labs, who've been really helpful throughout. And last but not the least, FireEye, for giving me an opportunity to share my work with you guys. And I think that's it. So I've seen some phishing URLs that are using uh, like Microsoft's OneDrive to host malicious uh, sites. Right. Did you see uh, those malicious sites on known and trusted domains get picked up by this model, or were they false <laughs> negatives? Um, so uh, I did see them getting picked up by the model, and that's what we wanted to send for slow analysis. So. The, the only thing that we I made sure that this thing rejects was like one click URLs, but phishing domains it does select. Um, did you ever see samples where like the letters com or are you were in like the domain itself, so like computer world dot something or something, mm, and, and like ever could, influenced the detection? Could have been. I didn't really pay too much attention to something like that, but could have been. I'll have to check. Thanks. Kind of on a related question, does your model keep track of where in the URI you are actually seeing some of these engrams? Yes. To distinguish between like is, is I'm I'm seeing this in a subdomain versus somewhere in the path. Right. Okay. Yeah. I look at dif uh, different parts of the URL separately. So there's no feature that is for the entire URL. It's always like, do you see this pattern in just the domain or the path or the query? It's not across the whole URL. Thanks. I uh, really like the way you were uh, balancing the difference between false positive and false negative and the importance for the model. I tried. But uh, as kind of an addition to that, in, given that the speed of the model's execution is important, do you see any value in trying to measure the classification speed of the various models and balancing that against the accuracy rate when you're making the trade-off for the various models? Um, I didn't really look at, like when I saw that the other models weren't even performing too well and given that the performance of a random forest was acceptable, I just went with it. <laughs> Thanks. Did you see any signal from, um, this is wonderful by the way. Thank you. Um, did you see any signal from um, like homoglyph and Unicode type, like character set stuff? Yes. I did, but then that just came under the high entropy features that I had in the model. Uh, the yeah. Simple approach would just catch right. that. That's cool. Yeah. Um, one thing I was wondering, uh, I'm, I'm not even sure if this question makes sense, not being super familiar with email data, but uh, the the domains that you're looking at, I assume, are coming from the refer the string that's actually being sent out and like queried right. by the DNS server. But presumably, a lot of times, like the there's different text that the human sees, which could also have a lot of signal. Um, is that like the the uh, the render text on the thing that you're going to click basically mm -hmm. might not match the domain? Um, so there are uh, we do some pre-processing even before uh, the URLs hit our model, like uh, rewriting or checking if um, it's going to a different landing page. So what ends up coming to the model is like the it's final version of the URL. Yeah, yeah, I guess I'm just wondering if an additional signal to like add in would be the, oh, the, yeah, the text maybe. string that the human is, is seeing. Hmm, I, I, could, I could look into that. Thank you, thanks for the feedback. Other questions for Apurva? Okay, cool. thank you thank so you. much.